Okay. The question is, when a lie is good and the truth is bad, how do we live? What's going on in a society, in a world where lies are considered more important and better, and that truth is considered bad? It's sad because, as you can see, there's this cloud that looms over our lives when... Uh, there is a lot of misinformation or information you can't trust. Uh, I remember a professor telling me that there's no such thing as black and white, just shades of gray. And that's uh, interesting when it's just shades of gray. Now, I like certain shades of gray, but uh, when it comes to truth, when it comes to lies, is there such a thing as gray? And so those questions people often ask and wonder, and now our society is really trying to promote a more gray standard. So what can you really believe? Who can you really believe uh, when there's lies versus truth? And how do you know what the truth is compared to what a lie is? And I truly believe that more and more deception creeps into the world every year. Uh, a couple decades ago, we thought it was bad. I'd like to go back to a couple decades ago, uh, in a sense, just because there wasn't as bad as it's become. So we're, we're hearing this uh, argument that there is no really truth. Truth isn't uh, something that uh, we can prove. And so if there's really no truth, uh, what can you really believe? What's the foundations? How do we go about living a life? What about eternity? Is eternity really that important? If we don't even know that there's a truth that we can believe in. So I think a lot of people are hurting these days because they don't know what the truth is. They don't know who to believe. And uh, there's millions and millions of voices all vying for their time to be the ultimate truth. You know, we're also told truth is subjective and it's up to the individual to believe, interpret, or what they think it means. Again, um, who, who is it that you can believe? I've heard a lot of people give me opinions about God. I don't think God would do, and then they, or I think if there was a loving God, he would do. And so we're left to a lot of opinions. And Jesus had to deal with that. You've heard it said, but I say unto you. So the truth in Jesus' mind wasn't subjective. Truth is truth, and it needs to stand and align with God's word. So as the insanity begins to grow, you know, here's a whole new philosophy and thought that's been growing and gaining ground for some time. I heard it when I was taking college courses. Maybe the chair you're sitting in isn't really even a chair. And everything behind you doesn't exist. It's only what you perceive out in front of you. And so there are some people saying that uh, reality may not really exist. And, you know, and that's gaining popularity again. You know, we're in the matrix. If we're in the matrix, does that mean I can just wipe you off since I don't like you in the game? And it's okay. I mean, if we take away a standard of reality, what's left? How do we determine what is sane and not sane? I have seen, uh, working in the, the field of psychology, I have seen so many changes from 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, and it's getting more and more bizarre uh, to go ahead and, and claim uh, there's no evil. I, 
researching some stuff here. And there's a psychologist who says, you know, people that believe in good and evil, they're really whacked out people. No matter how intelligent they are, they're, they're insane. And he likes quoting Marx, you know, religion is the opiate of the masses. And yet he offers no solution for all those people who need the opiate of religion and faith. That's, that's you know, leaves us just sad. So what will the standard of sanity finally look like? Or will there ever be any standard? I mean, how do we know who's right, who's insane, who's not? Because if we keep redefining it to what our emotional political correctness might say it should be, hmm, will there be any right and wrong? And who, who establishes that? And who can even say that there is no right or no wrong? I mean, the, the insanity, this is a rabbit hole that once we start down, it seems like a pit that has no end to it. So who can really say that's the wrong way? You see the sign that says it's the wrong way. After all, what is right? What is wrong? I, I, I can go down that street because that sign, it doesn't line up with my political viewpoint. I don't think I should have to. I'm going to go that way anyways. Have you ever got onto a one-way street heading the wrong direction? You know, we did that once. We turned into a one-way street and there's all, and boy, what a mess trying to navigate. And we had to put on the brakes and slowly back out and, and get back out of the way and turn the correct way. But there was a wrong way. Everybody else was going one way. Whether I agreed with it or not, it didn't change the fact that everybody else was going to go one way. Wow. But in today's thinking, I should have just kept plowing through and make everybody else get out of my way, right? After all, I have feelings too. And you should respect my feelings and let me go on my merry way and you just get out of my way. Isn't, isn't that kind of the insanity we're hearing today? No one has the right to say something's wrong. If that's true, how can they even say it? So if we say it's wrong, you know, maybe all directions are wrong. Maybe there is no right way. So we just sit at the intersection and we don't do anything. Because after all, everything is wrong. Or is it all right? Ah, oh, man, is your, is your brain starting to hurt a little today? Is it starting to go, wow, this is like uh, Pastor Dan, you're kind of going crazy. You know, we're, we're getting confused. Everybody's trying to pull us in what they think is the right way. Uh, don't take it wrong, folks. You know, just accept it that your way's wrong and my way's right. Uh, what makes your way right? And I want to know what their standards are for what's right. They certainly don't believe the Bible's right. And they think killing babies in the womb is right. They think killing babies after they're born is right. See how this insanity keeps on moving? It started with early pregnancy, then midterm, and then late term, and then post. And we'll let them lay there on the table for a couple hours, maybe a day or two. Maybe it's going to get bumped up to, to 90 days, you know. I have a business associate said that there should be a button on teenagers to abort at that point. But, you know, there's this whole concept out there that everybody's right except God. Christians are wrong. Muslims are right. By the way, I think those that support that from a different perspective are just trying to get votes because if they actually had the power, they would lop off their heads probably. After all, they're creating all this confusion. So what if there really is danger ahead? How would you know? And what could you do? So when we say that there's danger ahead in your life, in this life, you could ruin relationships, destroy your life, but even worse, into eternity, as you enter into eternity, there's danger if you're not on the right path. And see, Satan wants to silence that. He wants us to get out of the, the warning, 
uh, message. You can have God. You can have a God. You can have a Jesus. And you can talk about heaven all you want, but don't you dare warn people about hell. That's hate speech. I mean, the bridge is out. What are you going to do? If we go by the new standard, if there's even a standard, uh, how could we save somebody from going over? Could we warn them? Should we warn them? Again, this is the insanity that's being forced on other people. So, yes, I believe you have the right to disagree with what I believe. You have a right to disagree with the Bible. God gave you the power of choice. Let me illustrate it this way. I don't believe in gravity. Does that stop gravity from being gravity? If there's no absolutes, why does gravity work? Absolutely. And it can only be superseded by greater force and greater energy, thermal dynamics, aerodynamics. But even then, if the power supply runs out or the power's not enough, gravity wins. But I don't believe in gravity. And I can jump off the Empire State Building all the way down laughing and yelling, there's no such thing as gravity. I'm woke. I really know what I'm talking about. You fools. I'm enlightened, splat. You know, gravity does exist whether we like to believe in it or not. So what if the bridge is out ahead? How do we protect other people? Well, Satan doesn't want you doing that. So if it's up to everybody to decide for themselves what uh, what is truth and what should be, I see the stop sign warning coming up. Is it really just a suggestion? I, I don't really feel like stopping. Is it real? Is it important? And, eh, you know, there's been times I've run through a, a stop sign uh, or a stoplight, not intentionally, uh, and got away with it because there was nobody else coming or other people had to put on their brakes. But that doesn't mean that that stop sign or that stoplight warning is, isn't a valid uh, sign to follow. And so when God gives us signs and wonders and we don't obey, what's going to happen? So I don't believe this speed limit in the school zone is good. Again, no absolutes are needed. So how safe and secure would our children be going to school? Well, they're probably not because we're teaching a bunch of garbage instead of uh, the truth. So, again, as you, if we just apply in this simple illustration that we're talking about today, we've got people who believe they can make up their own speed limits. You know, the Autobahn, no speed limit. Well, that's great. And that's fine if you've got a car and you have the driving skills for it. But, you know, the Autobahns is different than most highways and most roads. So if we, we want our freedoms at the expense of other people's freedom, we want our beliefs at the expense of other people's beliefs, what's going to happen? And how long will we really survive? You know... You've seen this sign coming up that it's head-on traffic. Both ways are hidden at each other. <laughs> you can say it's okay because you're enlightened. Uh, we know better than other people. Sure, right. Uh, would you truly follow this kind of uh, thinking out on the road or any other aspects of life? We can do whatever we want because, you know, the Bible's outdated. There's no proof. Really? What about the prophecies that have come? Well, you can't prove there's a God. Well, you can't prove there's not a God. In fact, hundreds of millions of people have encountered God. See, if you're a true scientist, you're going to take and look at the Bible and say, what are the rules and regulations that talk about? Sin blocks us from seeing God. On the day that you seek me with all your heart, on that day I'll be found. Has the, the scientists who say that there is no God actually applied God's word and cleansed their heart before him and sought him and believed that he is and that with all their heart, 
And if he doesn't show up, then maybe they've got something to say. But I don't think that will ever happen because most anybody that truly follows God's way and enters into his dimension, into his kingdom by faith. So you have to, get, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we're going to claim our, our, our archaeology or lack thereof based on our own personal experience and get down on anybody else who has had an experience and just uh, make it insanity according to our claims. You know, Isaiah warned us, woe to those who call evil good and to good uh, and call good evil and put darkness for light and light for darkness who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. They're trying to change the rules that creates confusion. They're trying to confuse little children about their sexuality that they weren't maybe born uh, to be boy or girl or maybe they should be non-binary where Josh was talking about. I didn't get to figure that one out yet. I mean, the insanity is, you know, I, I, I'm a four-year-old black girl and I'm going to, that's how I feel. So I'm going to be woke and I, and that way you can't be down on me as an old white guy. All right. Really? <laughs> hey guys, no matter what kind of nonsense I believe and push for, if it ain't uh, acceptable by the majority of people looking at me <laughs> and a medical examination, I mean, I'm probably walking in delusion, right? I mean, that's what we used to call it, delusion, insanity, some kind of mental issue. But today we're exalting that. And I'm, I'm very compassionate people who have diminished mental capacities and issues. But when we want to turn the whole world upside down and try to make everybody accept the delusions, really, folks, at what point does it get bad? And get really bad. Jesus said, because of iniquity abounding, the love of many will wax cold. And we're looking at people who have no real love. Their idea of love is just sex. Or making sure you don't tell somebody the truth. Because if you tell them the truth, that's hate speech. Really, how far from the realities of God's truth have we come? Proverbs 14, 25, a truthful witness saves lives, but he who utters lies is treacherous. Think about this. As I look at some of the stuff that's being expounded today, there's nothing but treachery. But here we can save lives if we speak the truth according to God. Why does the devil hate the truth? Because it's going to protect people. It's going to save people. A lying tongue hates those it crushes. And a flattering mouth works out ruins in people's life. Boy, if that doesn't describe some of the nonsense that's going out there. People are in power who are using lies. And it's crushing lives right now. It's always been crushing lives. But we're really seeing it in this pandemic. And the lies are going to continue to go. And at what expense? Well, people's expense because they want power. And, and they don't care. They'll flatter. They'll do anything they can. But it's going to end up being a ruinous work in people's lives. First Peter tells us, whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit or lies. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. First Peter 3, 10 through 11. I use the English Standard Version today. Here's another from the Bible, which I consider and believe with all my heart to be true. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. I'm always amazed when I hear the, the whacked out, woke up craziness that start talking about Jesus would do it this way. Really? Yeah. How can we speak for God when we don't even walk in the truth and in the light? 
See, we like the devil likes to throw out some truth and then mix it up. It's like taking a, a great steak and putting poison on it. If I handed you a bottle and said, this is poison, you wouldn't take it. But if I said, here's a beautiful ribeye, it's laced with poison, but I'm not going to tell you that. Same effect, but I'll get more people to eat the steak than drink the poison. And why is it that all of these people are spouting this? Well, their father is the devil, according to Jesus. And you want to do the desire of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks it from his own nature. For he is a liar and the father of lies. So Satan tries to dress it up so it's not black and white. He likes to put it in gray. If it's gray, there's a little truth mixed with a little lie. You know, you start mixing the color black and white, you're going to get the color gray, right? And how much more uh, gray it will be with the lie versus how much white will there be with the truth? Well, it will never be pure truth as long as it's mixed. And this is what the world tries to cram down the throat of so many people. Jesus told us that the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. See, the world, they don't get it. They don't have the eyes to see and they don't have a heart to know and to receive him and believe in him. And so when you turn that off and expect uh, to see or hear from God, while you're running in rebellion, uh, you're not going to see or hear from God. We're his only representatives uh, because he's allowed us in the flesh to give his word to those who are not in the spirit of truth. Jesus said, but when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come so if you're really concerned about what's happening and what's going on go and invite the holy spirit to have full access to your life let him purge out on holiness again he is a holy spirit and whatever's blocking us from seeing god and hearing god and keeping us from understanding or believing the truth the problem is that we are faced with a choice What parts of God's word are you going to believe? And what parts are you going to say, I don't believe? I had those issues when I first started trying to walk in the, the word. It kind of bugged me that sometimes what I wanted, what I desired, didn't align with God's word. But, you know, as I surrendered and said, I believe your word is truth, O God. More and more knowledge of the truth began to flood my, my life. And eventually, as I surrendered to the Lord completely, the best I knew how, and the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit empowered my life, came into me in a dynamic way, just like it was in the Bible. And see, whenever I want to take and shortcut God, or I don't want to believe God or his word or the way he does things, I've already put some black and confusion now starts to flood my mind because it's not pure. It's not light. It's that grayish stuff, the gray area. Oh, that might be for you, but not for me. Oh, well, that was for the days of the apostles, but not for today. And Satan has done a marvelous work using people who are professors of faith. And as we all can say, they that can't do teach, there's a problem when people aren't really sold out to God and his truth and buying the whole truth. The Bible tells us, buy the truth, sell it not. In the garden, man bought the lie and died. Are we going to take the whole truth of God or bits and pieces we like? Are we going to buffet God and say, I don't like the, the vegetables. I don't like this and that of yours because those things, you know. They're hard on my flesh, and I don't want those things. 
Or we're going to say, we'll take all of your counsel, Lord, and live by all of your words that have come out of your mouth. We live in a time on parallel where the truth of God's word is going out and the lies of Satan are going out. And there's a clash because truth and lies don't mix well together. You mix them, truth is gone. If you bring truth into and the light blows the darkness out, the darkness must go. But man loves darkness rather than light. And as a result, our world continually goes into greater and greater darkness. With some light spots here and there from believers, some nations that are sold out for God are still being blessed. But there's not many. So today, are you going to have a gray relationship because God says in him is no shadow, no gray. He's pure light. There's no turning or variation because that's the only way you're going to know the truth and the truth will set you free according to Jesus. The truth will set you free. I encourage you to study God's word, get a Bible dictionary, get a dictionary, and spend some time asking God, let the Holy Spirit, Father, tell me the truth. Because without Jesus, and when we start picking and choosing what we want to believe in God, and the word be lost. I encourage you today to believe God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. If you don't believe, and if you don't believe, you really can't. And yet, at the end, He's going to say, we never had a close relationship. I don't know you. Because we love lies more than we love the truth. Everyone under our life becomes wicked, according to Scripture. We wonder why children go into rebellion. We wonder why the world's a mess. Because the church and, and the Christians that have become lukewarm become gray, a sickly gray. They've lost the truth. They've sold the truth, bought the lie so they can be accepted and not seen as foolish because pride reigns. So I encourage you today, take your pride, take everything to the cross and just talk with dad during these times. Let Jesus become real in your life, not just a theory that you read about in the Bible or that you hear from somebody talking about him. But he's real to you because he is real. He's the truth. He is the word. And he wants to set us free in such a way to give us life and life more abundantly, not just here and now, but for all eternity. Father, I thank you for your goodness and your mercies to us. I thank you that you've given us the truth, which is your word. And Satan works overtime trying to make the Bible irrelevant or questionable and he's doing all that he can to destroy our faith but lord faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of god and with faith we begin to encounter you and see you and hear you because we step out of the dimension of, of this fleshly sight that cannot inherit the kingdom of god and by faith we step into the kingdom of god and we get to know you and you know us and your voice is the only voice we want to follow and not another. So we need to know what truth is so that we will align to your voice when you call out and another we will not follow. Thank you for calling us out of darkness into light. Thank you that you do have standards. You do have godly good rules that protect our life. You have all of these things that you've brought to us. And the greatest is salvation through Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son. 
And today, Lord, fresh and new, we cry out, Jesus, save us from this perverse generation. Save us from this world standard that is trying to block our brain and our hearts and our spirit and our soul and cause us to be lukewarm. Help us, Lord. Help us to gain righteousness again through Jesus and to walk rightly and to walk humbly and walk with the mercy of God all the days of our life. Blessed be your name, Lord, as you watch over your people this day. Encourage them and let your word not return void.